All right, welcome back. In this video, I'll showcase how to script any HTML table and then add that data to a CSV file. We will first look at how to script a simple HTML table and then we will look at a more advanced example where it is more difficult to select the table elements. So to start, the first example showcases a simple HTML table that contains some movie data. I have this starter code here where I've basically just imported Selenium and I've also initialized a new web driver. In my case, I'm using Chrome and I'm also getting the page. I also make sure to leave the link in the description as well. So if we look at the website that we want to script first and we inspect it to look at the layout that it has, we can see that there is a table element and the data that we want is within the tbody element which stands for table body and within that table body element that is all the rows which are the tr elements and within the tr elements are all the individual cells of data which are the td elements which stands for table data so what we want to do essentially is to loop over all the rows that we have and within each row we want to loop over all the table data and save that data to a new csv row and we will do that for all of the rows within this table body so what i'll do first is to select the table body element which we can do first by defining a new variable i'll call my table body and then we need to use driver.find element to tell selenium how we want to select the element we will first need to import by from selenium.webdriver.common.by So since this is a simple table, we just need to select it by the tag name which you can use, which we can specify that by using by.tag name. And we will specify the tag name that we want to select as tbody. What this will do is to select the first tbody element within the web page. So now that we have the table body, we want to select all the individual rows within this table body, which are the tr tags. So to do that, we can use table body, which is the table body element. And then we can use find elements to select multiple elements and not just the first one. And then we will use by.tag name as well since we need to select all the tr tags. And when we use find elements, all of the elements will be selected and they'll be stored in a list. So I will store it in a variable and I will loop over all of those rows using a basic for loop. And within each row, we want to select all of the table data elements. So we will create a new variable called table data. And on this new variable, we will use the current row, which we have specified to be the row variable. And then we will find all of the elements with the tag name of TD. So what we're doing here in this for loop is that for each row, we are selecting all of the table data within that row. We can then loop over all of the individual data cells and for each individual data cell i'll just print it out so that you can see what it looks like and we can get the text of that element by using the dot text attribute and before we run it i'll also use the driver.quit method so that the browser closes once this script has finished executing So if we run our application now, we can see that all of the individual data points of the table are printed out to the terminal. And before we save the data to a CSV, for each row, I'll initialize a new empty list. And then I'll append all of the data for that row to that list. Once we have iterated over all of the data for that row, I will then print out the list for that row. 
So if we run the script again, we can see that each individual pivot row is being printed out as a list. And I've stored all of the data for each row into a list because it will be easier to write it to a CSV, which we will see how to do now. And to write it to a CSV, I will first import the CSV module, which is a built-in package within Python. So to write the data to a CSV file, I'll first use a context manager, which allows us to open files. We write it like so, we need to specify with open, and then as an argument, we can specify the file name, I'll call it moviedata.csv. And we can also specify the mode that we want to open the file with. The default is just to read that file, but in our case, we want to write to that file, so we will use the W or which stands for write. This will automatically create this file if it does not exist. And if it does exist, this will overwrite whatever is within that file. And I'll also write as file so that we can refer to it as the file variable within our script. To write to that file, I'll then make a new variable called writer. And then we can use the CSV module. Then we can use the writer method. And then specify the file that we want to write to. This will make it easier for us to write to a CSV file. Using this CSV writer, we can then use the write row method which allows us to write a new row to our CSV file. The write row method expects a list of values and it will add those values to a new row within our CSV file. So we can just use the list that we have created and append the values of each row to. And if we run the script now, we can see that After a while it does, make a new CSV file, but the rows are separated by a new line. To remove this new line, we can specify a new line keyword argument, and we can specify that to an empty string, which basically tells the context manager to not use a new line between each row. So if we execute our script again, We now have a CSV file with all of the movie data within the HTML table. Alright, now that we have already seen how to script a simple table, I'll showcase a more complex example where it is more difficult to select certain elements. This is just the Wikipedia page for some population data. The table that we would try to script is the global annual population growth table. And if we inspect it to see what we have, we have a few problems here. The first being that there are multiple tables within this page, but the find element method only selects the first table. And within each row, scraping the individual data points isn't so straightforward, since they are also represented by th and td. Whereas in the previous table, all of the data points were all just represented using the td element. And this is quite common when you are trying to scrape tables. So I'll create a new Python file. And I'll use the same starter code. And I'll also leave the link to this web page in the description below. We'll first select the body element. But since there are multiple table bodies within this page, and we can't just use tbody since that will select the first one. What we will need to do is instead is to use the xpath, which is an easy way of selecting any element within a web page. You will see what this means in a quick moment. So to get the xpath of the table body, we first need to right click, and then we can go to copy, and then we can go to copy xpath. Make sure you click copy xpath and not copy full xpath. That is something different and it is much better to use just the relative xpath, which is what copy xpath will give. We can then use by.xpath and then we can specify the xpath that we want to use. So I'll just paste the xpath that we have and we can see here that this is used to specify exactly which table body element we want within the web page. 
but if we were to run this script right now we would run into an error and that's because the xpath uses the double quotes already so we will need to switch our string quotes to just single quotes and within the table body we will also want to do something similar to our previous table which is that we want to select all the rows so we can do that by using table body dot find elements to select all the elements that meet our condition and then we can use by dot tag name and we will use trsd tag that we want to select we then loop over all of the rows and within each row we will want to select all the th and the td elements since those contain all of the data and then within each row we can use the find elements method select both td and th tags we can use a css selector which is probably the easiest way to go about doing this so we will use by the css selector and for the selector we will use td comma th we should select both td and th tags within that row and now this gives us a list that we can loop over to get the individual data points for each row i'll create a new list to store their values in like we did previously so for each row i'll loop over all of the data values and add them to the list and we can then write each row's data to a csv like we did previously by first using a context manager to open a new file and i'll call my file population data.csv and once again this file will be automatically created if it does not exist yet to write to that file we will create a writer variable and there will be csv.writer and we will need to pass in the file so for each row i will want to write that row's data as a new row to the csv file so i'll use the write row method and it expects a list of all of the values for that row so i'll specify the row data list then i'll use driver.quit to close the browser once the script has finished executing so just to recap quickly here we are first selecting the table body and then within that table body we are selecting all of the row elements and then we are looping over all of the rows and selecting both td and th tag names and we add each row's data as a new row to our csv before we run the script we also need to specify the new line keyword argument to an empty string so that there will not be any spaces between each row in our csv so if we run the script now we now have a csv file with one of the data from the original wikipedia page and that's all for this video if this video has helped you or if you have enjoyed this video please consider possibly subscribing or liking the video to help my channel grow and to see more of such content